Oh, there's a mouse. He's in your <laughs> shoe. G'day, it's Marlon Williams here, uh, speaking to you from Littleton, Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, day 10 of the lockdown. Haven't lost it yet. Roasting a lot of meats and watching The Sopranos. Gonna have a chat with uh, Mr. Finn Andrews today. Hello, this is Finn Andrews. Um, this is my second week in isolation here in Auckland, New Zealand. Things going okay, lots of reading and writing and eating. Today I'm going to have a conversation with Mr. Marlon Williams and then I'm gonna play one of his lovely songs. This will be a miracle. Hello. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Miracles happen. How's things? Have you, have you had a coffee, Marlon? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> How have you prepared your coffee? Stove top. Nice. Yeah, we, I've gone, um, gone the French press. Oh, okay. Classic. Yeah. yeah. You're in the bush, assumedly been pretty still for the last week at, at the very least. Yeah. Um, how's, your, how's your head? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably closer to two weeks for us. We've sort of like, we did a bit of a preemptive not move around. Um, and I mean, I... I live a pretty sedentary existence at the best of times, so it was sort of like it was pretty easy just to stay indoors a little more than usual. But it's odd. Once again, nature having nature as a uh, as a real um, soothing balm for all of this, isn't it? You know, just it's like just all the all this input of doom and gloom, and then you just can just turn. Just wrench your head around and look out the window, and totally, yeah. I was thinking the other day, it's it, Littleton feels a lot like Amsterdam at the moment. Like there's people um, riding around on their bicycle, like just all day. They've adapted, adopted the Dutch sort of um, friendly distance, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it just everything feels a little bit sort of Amsterdam, dim like. Oh, very over, nice down here, which is which is nice, you know. We first met in Christchurch, didn't we? Gee, we certainly did. Um, and when you were on tour with the Vales. I remember you, you being backstage and someone in the Vales had bought a um, portable karaoke microphone oh, yeah. from Japan. Everyone was singing pretty horrendous things. I think I sang Dancing Queen. It was, it was awful. And it was great. Someone passed it over to you. I, couldn't, I can't remember which song it was, but I just remember everyone going really <laughs> quiet. As you sang this thing, <laughs> really beautiful. Can you remember what song it was? No, I don't. But it was. I just remember that being just such a great, like a great idea for a backstage activity. It really yeah, passes it the time. There was a gold mine. <laughs> it was. Yeah, but that was that would have been the first time, first time we met, and uh, you know I'd been a big fan a long time before that, so it was. Uh, oh, bless you, man. Where were you when you wrote "Beautiful Dress"? I was writing from the perspective of where of the house that I, that the song takes place in. Yeah, I was at home. I was at my mum, my mother's house. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, most of the songs on that album I can remember writing them, but that but beautiful dress. I remember there being a, a hook. I just can't remember what happened. So mm. yeah, I just remember that I wrote it there. Usually, the, my favourite ones of mine that I've written, I don't really remember much about the writing of. Them. Maybe they just more interesting to us as the writers, you know, because of the mysterious conception. Where have you gone? You must have left for the town. A dollar in your palm. Throw down Didn't you lay beside me? And was was your dad a musician? Yeah. yeah. He was in a, a lot of punk bands in, in Gisborne and then in, a bit in Christchurch. Um oh, we both had punk dads. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yours to uh you know, with, with incredible success. My little heart of stone. Come back, let me wear you like a beautiful dress 
Did he write songs as well? Yeah, yeah, we had a f- good few efforts of trying to write together when I was younger, and it was a good way of um, emboldening myself to, to try and write songs, is being able to do it with Dad, you know. Did you talk a lot about music? Was it a big part of your upbringing and was it immersive in that way? Sort of. Like I had a funny one because I moved to New Zealand with my mum when I was 10. That's right. Um, and didn't really, I didn't have any interest in music before yeah, that right. really. And I think he, the life he led with it and a lot of the friends of his who were around our house as, when I was growing up did a good job of sort of putting me off the whole thing. For quite yeah, a right. <laughs> yes. Let me wear you like a beautiful dress. Let me love you. Let me wear you like a beautiful dress. Let me love you. Let me wear you like a beautiful dress. Oh. I started singing it was that quite normal sort of story really of like no one else in the band wanting to sing and oh, so right. it just sort of fell to me it was a really hideous uh, instrument for for at least I'd say four years like had no there's no pleasure to be derived from listening wow <laughs> to me wow sing. I'd love to hear that yeah um uh, yeah I'll maybe I'll play you something at some point oh it's great a, it's a real yeah car please crash. Are you playing more piano these days? Oh, there's a mouse. So I've just seen a little mouse in there. Oh, we got shit. a mouse, Tom. He's in your <laughs> shoe. Sorry. <laughs> Is it? He's brown too. Oh. Little I've guess. never seen a mouse in, in this room. Sorry. He could be our pet. We're, we're sort of lacking a pet around here at the moment. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. Nurture it. <laughs> You've had to push back a bit of touring because of all this. Oh yeah, all of that. Yep, you've got quite a few friends who just like literally just put records out. So that'd be harder, really. Where are you at? You're writing, right? You'd- I'm I'm in a weird spot in that I've sort of I've been on hiatus writing for the last few months anyway, and was sort of coming to the point. It was like, okay, now I've got to make a call about where I'm recording. Do you think you'll make make the record over here? Or well, now, um, quite probably. You know, it's. Uh, it's pretty hard to to see, um, you know, being able to get out of here, your sort of effectiveness, make a record within the next year even, it seems. Yeah. I don't know. I hope you don't hate whatever version of your song I come out with, but... Uh, I'm <laughs> a, likewise. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of, uh, of uh, The Spirit and the Flame. I think it's a really... I don't know, I just, I love the understatement of the words and the way they just, they hang over the melody, but it just, that's the backbone of the song and it doesn't deviate from, from its strength. I had a little luck, but I threw it all away. I followed every crown you left along the way. No matter how I'd scream, I couldn't wait the day. So I sing it to the night and to the moonlight instead. It's dark beyond the stars. It's cold out in the rain. We're kind of the last industry to probably be able to start functioning again, aren't we? Really, until the yeah. concept of like getting 500 people in a room together wouldn't just seem completely insane. I suppose that's sort of what's dawning on everyone a bit, isn't it? Is this, the scale of this whole thing. The local touring scene is going to wind back about 60 years in a way, you know, and that that's why I think it's you know so important that we, as a nation, make sure that smaller venues are able to survive this. No part of it unnamed, and though I find it hard, and though I dare not speak, you wipe the tears and touch, touch your hand upon my cheek. It's dark beyond.
the stars It's cold out in the rain I'm still looking for a glimpse Of the spirit in the flame Spirit in the flame Like, I imagine you had a beautiful voice from the get-go. Was it a steep learning curve singing? No, I, I think, I mean, I was always a... Um, always took the path of least resistance as a child so and music was definitely in terms of uh, at primary school it was the it was just much easier than maths really right yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it all so real I can't wait for it to unfold I just want to know how it feels don't leave me out when I look at your lyrics, it hits in the way that I, it does when I read a good poem. Oh, you know, that's so it's, nice. Thank you. It's sort of like, I think it's a result of having quite a shit voice for a long time. You sort of, <laughs> you just sort of focus on that. <laughs> well, it's been lovely speaking with you, Marlon. I've had a really nice time. I, it's it? just good to catch up with you in general, and this has nice, been a good, uh, good excuse to do it. That'll do. <laughs> 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 <laughs>